Hello and welcome to the Dark Mount video review for Transformers 4 Age of Extinction Slog. Now, Slog is the final Voyager in the Dinobot assortment. I am still waiting on our green friend, uh, Snarl, I believe it is. And then my Dinobots will be complete. Hooray! In his beast mode, obviously, this is some kind of a long neck dinosaur. Um, as with most of the Dinobots in this movie, it's not really any particular one. The tail is too short to be anything that we actually know of, and I'm not aware of any long neck dinosaurs having giant spikes. Sure, we'll call them spikes on their backs. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what this is supposed to be. It is a dinosaur with a long neck. Right, now before I move on to any articulation or anything else, uh, I do want to make one quick, possibly not safe for work and or children comment. So if you are easily offended or you're four years old or you're a parent with kids watching, maybe maybe just cover your ears for just just one, one second. I am overwhelmed by the ridiculous amount of like strange phallic weaponry on this figure. Um got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seventy nine, ten, eleven, twelve, I mean this guy is covered in giant red dildos. It's it's a little ridiculous. They even literally have little ends on them. I don't know what they were thinking with this figure. It is it is worth having just for how ridiculous it is. Okay. In this mode, he obviously does come adorned with several different weapons. Um, right here, though, I am going to talk about one major issue that I have with this figure. A lot of people are having trouble with the front part here because it's a soft plastic. Uh, I've found that it's really easy just to tuck it underneath these two arm pieces and it stays in fine. So that's not an issue for me at all. I haven't even had to do anything in terms of warming it up or anything. And it, it was horribly deformed when it got out of the box, but... I just transformed him, left it like this for, I mean, a couple days, and uh, it works fine now. The issue that I have is this transformation joint in the middle here, uh, and you'll see it better during transformation, but it basically is the thing that lets you kind of close up his dino form. It doesn't lock into place in any way that I have been able to find. Um, I could be wrong, I am not perfect, but I have not found any type of mechanism or clip or tab or anything that locks this joint in place. And the problem there is that it just creates a general wobbly, like, I don't even know if I want to say wobbliness, it's like a gallop. He can do this little like thing, which is kind of annoying. Um, I really do wish there was just some way to secure this here, and like I said, there might be that I'm just missing, but it's, it is unfortunate, and it makes it feel kind of wibbly-wobbly while you're playing with it, or trying to pose it, or doing whatever you're doing, so... While I do really like this figure, I would imagine, especially if I was a kid and I was actually trying to, like, play with this figure, that that would kind of irritate me a little bit. So he has these weapons on his shoulders, which do swivel around, but the long bits here hit into the long bits on his arms, so you kind of have to pull it out and then swivel it around and push it back in, but if you do not like them, they are removable. He also comes with these giant lance things, which are on kind of a strange rotating thing. It's got like this kind of arm going on. I don't really know what, what's happening with all that. But they are posable in, in several different directions. And they too can be taken off if you so choose. And you're seeing the, the issue here with the thing staying together. And here he is with none of his weapons on. Unfortunately, you can't really do anything about these giant things sticking off the sides of him. Which is kind of lame. 
and he looks pretty good. I mean, he's a, he's a good looking figure. I'm not trying to rag on him too hard. It's just he's he needed a little bit more work and a couple more tabs or something. And he needed a lot less soft plastic and uh, spikes. In terms of articulation, you don't get a whole lot, but you get more than I would have thought you did in a figure like this. His head is movable. His mouth opens. He has kind of a strange, barely movable ball joint here on the end of his head. He then has a full bend here. These are the ball joints that are used for his arms, so you get a very decent range of motion in there. The only consideration is having this thing tucked in there. Obviously, if you move it around too much, this thing is going to come unflapped. These things are articulated. You have bend here, and also rotation. And here's a weird thing that I'm going to mention in both of his modes, because I have no idea why it exists. The forearm here folds out. And there's actually some, like, molded-in detail in there. And it only folds out about two, three centimeters? And it is not at all required to get the hand out to do that. So I have absolutely no idea why that happens. It does not do anything at all in terms of helping him to stand. It's not usable for anything in either mode. I have no idea. Um, back legs. You have knee bend. You do not have rotation, and you can't really bend this back part because it's hooked up to a whole bunch of stuff. So you're really only getting that in the back legs. And the tail does not move unless you count this whole wibbly-wobbly transformation joint. Which I guess technically this is articulation. He is spine articulated. And just to get a sense of kind of how big he is in his beast mode. Here is Scorn riding on top of him. And here is just a size comparison between the three beast modes that are the most similar in size. So you have Voyager Grimlock, Slog, and Leader Grimlock. And for a giant Dinobot size comparison, here are all of the Age of Extinction Dinobots I have so far. Only waiting on Snarl. So as you can see, Slog is kind of somewhere in the middle between Leader Grimlock and Voyager Grimlock, in terms of his general mass and size. Transforming this figure is a bit weird the first couple of times you do it, because he has a, he's just kind of a jumble of parts that all swivel past each other, and it's, it's kind of a mess, to be honest, but once you figure out where everything needs to go, and the easiest way to get it there, and what order to do it in, it's not actually that bad. First thing to do is just to get it out of your way. You can kind of pull this out and just kind of bend that all there. And that will probably also detach this section here, which you don't really need to worry about quite yet. You want to come down here and you're going to kind of pull at that joint that I told you about until it swings up like this. And then you're just going to kind of use your thumbs here and work apart these two rubber pieces which will fold out to the sides like so. And then you can kind of pop your finger through here, this is another rubber piece, and separate right there. And you're going to want to twist these all the way around, like so, so that these are pointing like that. So 
You want to basically just fold the legs backwards and around like that. Then what you are going to do is fold this whole rubber thing out as much as you can. Fold this foot down and then you're going to fold <laughs> fold the leg so it's in there but you want to pull out the red piece first then you're going to wrap this rubber stuff all the way around the leg and kind of wrap it around the dino leg and you're going to use this tab here to hold it in place and then in the front you want to connect the tab on the front of this red piece to this hole in his shin and then position the foot as you wish. So again, you're going to unfold all of this, fold out the foot, fold the dino leg in there, but you want to get the red piece out first. Plug that in in the front, and then wrap this around, and plug it in behind the leg. And then you're going to want to rotate the legs around, because I have them in the wrong direction and then you're just going to fold these in like that to form kind of a little belt then you want to come up here to the top and you are basically just going to split all of this stuff and fold this out of your way at the same time as folding these two you kind of butterfly the arms out and then you want to collapse all of this down like so and there are two pegs right there that plug into these two holes and then this folds around like so and you can kind of do what you want with the head because of the way that these are positioned the more you try to put the head down past a certain point it's going to push this rubber thing back up into the back which will end up deforming it so I would suggest leaving that kind of as far up as you can without it moving the rubber which is about there unfortunately then you just want to pop the hands out on the arms fold these shoulder portions in they kind of end up locking stuff in place, kind of, not really, but they make things a little more solid at least, I guess I should say. Pop out the hand on the other arm. And there you have Slog in his robot mode. So I think he definitely is a very cool looking figure, but as you can see from the transformation, he's a little fiddly. And he has a whole lot of rubber parts on him that don't really go together as well as they should. I feel like if this guy was primarily made of harder plastic, the whole thing would just work better. Which is a shame. You can load him back up with his weapons if you so choose. And obviously he can hold these, which you have a couple different options. He can hold them just like normal, uh, what is this, lances, javelin, lance, I guess. Or he can hold them by these kind of arm things. The issue with this figure, like a couple of the other Dinobots, is that he has those curling iron arms. So if he's holding the sword... 
you'd have to have the whole arm up for him to wield it. And since it's kind of like a jousting weapon, not a sword, I don't really know what they're going for with these weapons, to be honest. They're a little big, they're a little cumbersome, they don't look great in either mode. They had to add those giant black things on the back to even make them work properly. Uh, I could have done without these, to be perfectly honest. But you also have the option to have him hold them like so. So it does give him a little bit more uh, ability to wield them in a functional manner, I guess, because he could kind of change the position of them. I don't know. Unfortunately, you can store these but they just don't look great. I mean I guess they look better than having him hold them. I don't know. It's up to you. You can kind of have them coming from back around if you want, I guess. That's actually not too terrible. Point is, you got options. This guy is a little fiddly, he's a little difficult to pose, but you definitely do have display options, <laughs> and he does look pretty cool. For a giant group shot, here he is in robot mode with all the other Dinobots. And here's the whole crew, minus one. Here he is with both the Voyager and Leader Grimlocks. And as you can see, he is much closer to Voyager Grimlock in his robot mode than he is Leader Grimlock. Whereas they were a little bit closer to each other in their beast modes. For articulation on this figure, you have semi-articulated shoulder things. He's got a universal joint for his shoulder, which does not actually smash into things as much as it looks like it would. He has an upper arm rotation, uh, backwards and forwards bend in the elbow, and he has kind of not helpful hand articulation. <laughs> He does have waist rotation, surprisingly enough. His hips are on universal joints, but they're attached to these things. So depending on how you move them, you can get a lot of movement out of them. He has upper leg rotation. Rubber! He has upper leg rotation. Uh, backwards and forwards knee bend. And his foot swivels backwards and forwards and is on a natural slant. These things suck. I'm just putting that out there now. These suck. They will never, ever, ever stay in. any. No matter what you do. You could glue them and they're not going to stay in. For his head, it is on a ball joint and actually gets a really surprising amount of motion out of it. They cut a thing basically so he can look straight up, which is kind of strange. It's probably the most articulated ball joint head in the whole line, actually. So. My final thoughts on this figure are basically just that it's alright. 
I mean, it's it's a passable toy for a character that didn't even appear in the movie. So if you are collecting all of the Dinobots, oh my god, I hate these things. If you are collecting all of the Dinobots, you should probably get this guy. I mean, he's he is one of the Dinobots. There's only seven of them. That's kind of a personal preference thing, but in terms of his quality as a toy, especially when put up against all of the other Dinobots we've gotten, he falls he falls short. Um, I'll say that. He falls short. There's way too much rubber plastic. There are way too many things that, because of that rubber plastic, just do not connect properly. It's really, really quite frustrating. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on him that just doesn't peg in at all. And basically, he's just kind of a giant floppy mess. Uh, I'm not super fiddly with my toys, so it doesn't bother me all that much, because I'm not going to be like accidentally disconnecting his legs a lot, but it's it is easy enough to happen that it just happens through basic posing that you end up like flopping things out and up that shouldn't be moving. And that's really one of my major pet peeves with the Transformer is that they're designed first and foremost as transforming toys and they need to accomplish that before they accomplish anything else to be successful in my mind. And this guy's transformation is fine. I really don't mind his transformation. Some people think it's hard. It's it's only hard the first, like, one or two times you do it. My issue is that it doesn't work properly because of the materials that they chose. And that is the other half of Transformers. Part of it is, is being a successful transforming toy, and the other half is selecting the materials that you need to make it a successful transforming toy. And all of this stupid rubber just doesn't accomplish that. It's This would be such a better toy if these were at least even harder rubber, not this ridiculously bendy soft plastic. This is just, this is, might as well be paper. And that's very frustrating, especially considering the quality of the other Dinobots. This, this guy, hands down, and I hate to say it because I was really looking forward to him, is my least favorite of the Dinobots so far, without a doubt. Which, it, it really just sucks, because I wanted this guy to be fantastic, and the most frustrating thing about it is that he is so close to being great, and there's just like one or two stupid choices that they made in terms of design and manufacture that just took it down a good like four or five notches. Uh, and that's really just unfortunate, because someone probably spent three and a half years designing this toy, and because of two material choices, basically, it just doesn't work as well as it could. I know I sound like I'm being very negative. This is not a bad toy. It's just not it's just not up to the standard that I would like it to be. It's still a great display piece. I think he looks fine. It's still a, a fun toy to mess around with. It just doesn't quite hit the bar that I would have liked it to have hit. So I'm I, I would still recommend getting this. If you're not getting the Dinobots or you're not collecting the Age of Extinction line, I would not necessarily suggest buying this as just like a one-off toy for your collection, unless you really, really like it for some reason. This is more of a completionist item, in my opinion. It's not so bad that I I would tell you never to buy it, but do not pay more than like standard suggested retail for this. If you're paying more than like 19 to 20, 22 top dollars for this thing, you are being ripped off. This is not a $30 toy, this is not a $40 toy anything over there and you are just literally being robbed. Um, this is this is a Voyager. It feels like a Voyager. It's built like a Voyager. Pay for it like a Voyager. That's, that's all I'll say. If you can't find it in your stores for a decent price, wait and buy it used on eBay and you will be happy because if you buy this toy for 35 or 40 bucks, I don't think you're going to be happy when it shows up. <laughs> so, thanks for watching guys. Hope I wasn't too negative about this toy, <laughs> and I will see you guys next time.